Fill your thirst beside the river Wash the journey from your hands Feel the comfort flow inside you Come this far, you understand Fear's not allowed Where dreams can be lost Hello and welcome to Healing Outside the Box. I'm Tracy Crampton and I'm an energy practitioner. And I'm Rosemary Lachance and I'm an energy healer and a spiritual advisor. And we're dedicated to providing you with food for thought information and answers to alternative healing, spiritual development, animal welfare, nutrition, and our environment in the form of guest speakers who are experts in their fields. We hope you can find this helpful. Um, to for the answers that you're seeking and feel free to email or call us with any questions that you have regarding the show. We hope you enjoy. Okay, this is our 55th show and the title of the show is The Plight of the Wolves and we have with us tonight Mr. Joe Darling, educator at the Wolf Conservation Center in South Salem, New York. Welcome Joe. Thank Welcome. You. So nice. nice to have you here. Thanks nice for joining us. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Joe. Joe has been at the Wolf Conservation Center as an educator for one and a half years. He has made 16 trips in 16 years to Yellowstone to watch wolves. He was presence, present since the first wolf release. Joe work, worked several years with Wild Things Unlimited. <laughs> Those people or animals? No, those. That's oh, an organization. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> aided, <laughs> aided in their small carnivore study on wolverines, martens, lynx, and the effect of wolves on their population. He traveled extensively to photograph animals in the wild: Alaska, Australia, India, Africa, Peru, Brazil, Pant Pantanals, the Pantanals, Pantanals, yeah. and the Amazon, China, Costa Rica and Canada. Wow, wow. Well you are a traveling man. I'm out of breath just thinking about it. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> okay, well, around the world. all right, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you do with the Conservation Center, what you do, and then tell us what they do. Okay, well, uh, I, I'm an educator, what they call an educator at the uh, Wolf Conservation Center. Uh, what I basically do is give programs to uh, uh, groups that come up and we talk, uh, we have about a 40 minute discussion uh, about wolves and some of the facts and figures and then when everybody is an expert uh, we go up to see the wolves and I feed them through the fence <laughs> uh, and they take bits of food while the crowd screams for them to grab my thumb. <laughs> um, and I have to say I personally have gone up there with my dear friend and we enjoyed it so much and we enjoyed you because you are so good when you're talking to us you're funny you make it very delightful we just enjoy it so so much and so interesting you have so much that you tell us well, so we really really enjoy it especially the wolf howls yeah, and yeah. I don't want to tell people because I want them to be surprised when they come <laughs> because if you go there I'm telling you you're gonna have a wonderful time so what is being done at the Wolf Conservation Center? Pardon me? What is being done at the Wolf Conservation well, Center? Well, what, what we do primarily, or our primary focus, is to breed two very endangered species. We're, we're breeding and hopefully re-releasing into the wild red wolves and the Mexican mm -hmm. gray wolves. And that's, our, that's really our primary function, even though we, we give our programs and talks. Uh, that's really just our little money maker and so, way to support ourselves. Mm -hmm. But our, the primary thrust of the organization is to breed these two very endangered species and re return them to the wild where they belong. What are their estimated numbers now of population? Are they well, uh, scary low or near, they, near extinction? No, ac actually, the gray wolves. Back. The gray wolves are not an endangered species. Uh, those are the wolves we use for our, our kind of show and tell. And there are probably fifty or sixty thousand of those in Canada, and probably another uh, seven to ten thousand or eleven thousand in Alaska. Uh, that is kind of the latest count, unless you're the governor of Alaska, in which the counts 
a lot higher than uh, <laughs> the, or the ex-governor, I should say. Um, so they are really not an endangered species. The Mexican uh, wolves are. There's probably uh, about 400 in the wo world today and oh, wow. about 300 red wolves in the world today, most of which are in captivity. Uh, Either, really? either either for breeding purposes or uh, uh, or just basically to hold them. Uh, there are about 130 red wolves in the wild. They're all in North Carolina uh, in an area called the Alligator River Refuge. Uh, and there are 42 Mexican gray wolves in the Arizona, uh, New Mexico area in an area called the Blue Ridge Wolf Recovery zone and uh, that's that's it for for their two species in the wild hmm. well that's not very much it's not very many not at, all. at all no it's not very Considering many. the united states and the world my god that's that's it, nothing it's uh it's it those those two are as i said really really highly endangered species why is that now what's happening out there well, what, hap uh, what did happen what what happened basically to the wolf uh, they were enjoying a very fine life here in, in this country. Uh, they got along well with the indigenous people. Uh, they certainly were spiritual brothers. The uh, mm, mm, the Indian so tribes, high, the Indian tribes, many re, you know, revered yeah. them, put them on totem poles, uh, learned a lot of hunting techniques from them. Uh, and then about 400 years ago, uh, our ancestors came over here. Uh, in their little wooden boats, and Boo. yeah, they they <laughs> got off. off. They got off uh, the boats, and unfortunately, they brought with them stories like Little Red Riding Hood and Peter and the Wolf oh, and the Boy Who Cried they... Wolf, and they were afraid of wolves. And they oh. looked, they looked around, and they said, uh, "Oh, there's wolves here where we want to live." And they started to do what we do when we're afraid of something. They started to eliminate the wolf from the wild. And uh, unfortunately, wow. they were pretty good at it. See the, what fairy tales can do to you? <laughs> yeah, the gov government didn't help. They uh, put out bounties on wolves, and you could make oh. a living by killing the wolf. Oh. And as they settled further and further across the country, they continued to, to kill wolves. Uh, 400 years ago, there were 250,000 wolves in the lower 48 states. And mm. by 1970, there were somewhere between 500 and 1,000 Oh, left. my God. So wow. That's a lot of killing. It That's is a awful. lot of killing, a lot of, lot of unnecessary killing. And it unfortunately goes on even today. Uh, the, people the, are still afraid? And they yeah, still people are still afraid. Certainly, uh, certainly ranching and farming interests still maintain a lot of old prejudices uh, mm. against the wolf. And... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that if I were a rancher, I would wouldn't feel the same way. But if you uh, if you sit down and talk and evaluate the real world, uh, there's certainly room for both, uh, as long as we don't eliminate their habitat. And, uh, I heard that they don't. I read that they don't eat as many much of livestock as people think uh, they do. Do they? Right. No, that's absolutely correct. They hmm. the actual actually the wolves really are only responsible for about one-tenth of one percent of, of cattle predation. Uh, and that's really a pretty small amount. It is. Uh, coyotes kill maybe 22 times more than that. Mm -hmm. And domestic dogs kill six times more than wolves do. Wow. wow. But the wolf has always been a very large figure, larger than life. Mm -hmm. And uh, consequently, uh, they're, they're in the crosshairs. Is there more coyotes and wolves out there now? Many more. Many yeah, more. Many yeah, they, more. Didn't, they didn't eliminate coyotes them. Coyotes in our neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Days, yeah. Well, I mean. coyotes, unlike wolves, wolves are, are very shy and elusive in the wild. Oh. Uh, and they're going to do anything they can to stay away from people. Uh, coyotes don't have the same inhibitions. <laughs> coyotes have learned like to live live around among people. Among the domestic, yeah. Uh, and they, I mean, they live, basically, they live in downtown L.A. Uh, yeah. There's lots of coyotes down there. And, of course, New York City has had uh, a couple of coyotes in the last few months. Wow. Uh, police department chased, chased one little fellow around for about two and a half weeks before they finally managed to catch him. Wow. Uh, so, so coyotes are, are very adaptable to the urban environment. Uh, wolves, not so much. Yeah. They, if they sense a human presence, they're going to move as far away as they can get from that. They're going to basically run away. Now, coyotes will attack people? 
No, no? probably not. Okay. A coyote looks at a person as, as fairly large. They might uh, they might bite a child. Um, yes. Yeah, but uh, but it, in generally speaking, I, w I would say it would be unusual for a coyote to attack a healthy coyote. Right. Um, you throw rabies into the mix yeah, for either well, a wolf or a coyote, and yeah. it changes the dynamics. And so the wolves don't even want to come near the people. So that's, wolves don't not even want to come near the people. No. And they're so beautiful. Yeah, yeah they are a beautiful Aww. creature. Um, they um, they of course do come in contact with people because we've basically moved into their homes. Mm. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, it's hard for them to find space to live, uh, but when they do, um, you know, they're 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 pretty good about keeping their own to their own territory. Uh, so there's name wild wolves in Connecticut, is here? No, no, no. The last the last wild wolves were eliminated from this area in 1893. Wow. So that's quite a long time ago, and since then we haven't had any wolves at all around here. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't get calls all the time. You know, I saw, think, I mean, you know, I saw a wolf is. in the backyard. I saw a wolf in the woods. I saw a wolf at the mall. Mm -hmm. Now that could be true, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, but by and large, uh, what they're probably seeing are wolf relatives. Uh, the coyote being mm. the most common, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's most likely what they're they're saying. You know, they. They also, uh, I mean, we see fox as We're well, yeah. and of course, we all every day we see the most, uh, the closest relative to a wolf, which is mm. the domestic dog. The dog, yeah. You know, every dog is ninety-eight percent wolf, uh, whether yeah. it's a little wiener dog even or, like or a big, yes, even a chihuahua. <laughs> wow, that's hard to imagine. Or, or, or a husky or a, or a that's German shepherd. That's easier to imagine. Yeah, all all ninety-eight, same ninety-eight percent. So. I That's saw amazing. a wolf in uh, Canada when I was in Canada <laughs> in the winter time with the snow. I remember one night the, the snow and the wind and the wolf was sitting there and his fur was kind of long and it was blowing in the wind. He was so majestic yeah. and he just sat there and he looked around and he didn't move. You know, we had w w driven by in the car really slow. It was so beautiful. It was so peaceful and beautiful. I said, oh, I always feel it's a blessing to see a wild animal. I, I feel that way about all you wild know. animals. Yeah, I think it's a them. real treat when we get to see them. Yeah. And uh, a wolf is certainly a very spiritual animal. Oh, yeah. And when you see them, uh, particularly their eyes, they have, uh, they have these wonderful amber yeah, eyes. eyes. Yeah. And they, they can kind of look right through you. Which of course is one reason people are afraid of them. But uh, yeah, right, yeah. But uh, but it's an interesting fact. All wolves are born with blue eyes. Oh. And, and then uh, as like some people, yeah, like people somewhere around eight to fifteen weeks, they turn this shade of amber, and oh. uh, they have these wonderful golden eyes that. Uh, particularly when you see it with maybe a black wolf, it's just so mm -hmm. startling. The very first wolf I saw uh, was up in Canada, uh, up near Banff. And uh, he came out of the woods early morning and crossed the road right in front of me and turned mm. and stared at me. And I was hooked on wolves from there on. Wow. And it was just, just, you know, just a chill went through you. Mm -mm. Uh, now, the, you know, I've uh, been reading on the internet and everything about up in Alaska where Sarah Palin started killing wolves. What reason? What? Why was she doing that? It was terrible. Well, from helicopters with uh, rifles so the wolves don't even have a chance. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, Sarah Palin actually is supporting uh, the aerial gunning of wolves right. for the benefit of the the hunting community. Uh, what they're doing, they're shooting the wolves uh, in order to maximize the number of caribou and the number of moose in the uh, in the areas that the hunters and the sportsmen use. And oh, the feeling, geez. the feeling of. Some of the sporting clubs, not all, but uh, some, is that the wolf is killing too many of the caribou, too many moose. It's making it too hard to, to too find. Too hard for them to go out and for them kill them. Yes, for them to go out and kill, kill, kill yeah, a wolf. Yeah. So um, uh, what Sarah Palin did was she organized these um, aerial gunning things oh. where where That's generally horrible. it's it's a uh, it's a government employee. It's a, uh, a fish and wildlife or um, a, a, a state sponsored. So it's a government group. approved. Oh, government approved. It's killing not, it's for not, sports. Yeah, it's not your, purposes. it's not your average hunter. Mm -hmm. It's somebody who goes out, uh, specifically to eliminate wolves. Uh. And, uh, it's a loophole in the law. What they are doing, 
uh, they are eliminating a, uh, uh, a nuisance species uh, in order to prevent the extermination of moose and caribou, which of course is nonsense because there are thousands and thousands of caribou and moose mm -hmm. up there. Um, and it's interesting that the aerial gunning generally only takes place not where there are high concentrations of wolves, uh, but in the areas where the hunters and sportsmen congregate to hunt the, the animals. Gee, isn't just, that so, gee, what yeah, a coincidence, go, go huh? figure, yeah, just a lucky, gee, lucky turn of just events. A, yeah. and, and they, and they, and they do this under the guise of this is for the sporting purpose. This, this is. Uh, this is. They to, don't even yes, try and cover this, it up with like no, the wolves well, are no, you they, know attacking they, people. Or. No, they, no, that's <laughs> that's a difficult claim to make. Uh, yeah. In in the last in the last hundred years, uh, there's been no case in the lower 48 states of a healthy wolf killing a person. Wow. Now, uh, unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago there was an incident in Alaska. Uh, where um, a pack of wolves did kill a, a woman jogger. And uh, that pack, um, uh, they did go out to try and gun down the pack. They did succeed in killing two of the wolves. Uh, the rest kind of disappeared, shy and elusive. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, but it's too bad. Uh, yeah. Up until that point, there, had, there, there truly hadn't been any uh, any any recorded and this was in Alaska. This was in Alaska. Where they're yeah. being gunned down. Yes. Keep yes. paybacks, Karma. bitch. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I had to say I'd like. It. I'd like to think they knew. <laughs> oh God. But uh, a, a kind of an interesting side note on that. Uh, they've had recently. They've had these hunts in Wyoming and, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, Montana and Idaho, and just just recently. Right after the hunt was stopped, a wolf paraded out in front of a group of people, just kind of stretched, walked, walked across the group, and just as though he knew, well, that's it for this year. I'm fine again. You know? <laughs> that's adorable. So it, that was is. A, it was a, it was an interesting story. Um, kind of the sad part of the whole hunting thing is a lot of wolves that were killed during this the this sanctioned hunt were all taken close to the national parks mm -hmm. where they were outside the national parks but they were close by, were close by. where they had been basically safe you know they mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. kind of got involved and they were a little more used to seeing people and they weren't quite as shy and elusive uh, I'm 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 guessing that uh, that they'll, they'll learn from this. Wolves are are not too dumb. Mm, they'll, yeah, they'll, uh, they'll pick up right. on this, and next year's hunt I think will be even more difficult. In fact, even this year they didn't make the quotas that they uh, that they had intended to to make. So uh, that was kind of good news for the wolves. Mm. Yeah, and I also read that to make it interesting, she had the she said if they cut off the paw and bring it up, bring it to her, yeah. she would give them a reward. That oh was my God. Uh, she was gonna yeah. she was gonna give you uh, an extra hundred bucks yeah. if you brought in the uh, the leg of a wolf that <sighs> program didn't happen the even they even the sporting <sighs> groups didn't go along oh, with good. that yeah. oh good i thought they did in fact if you talk That's to most sportsmen archaic. uh they're not in favor of aerial gunning most sportsmen will tell you that it's not the proper way to go after a wolf there really isn't much sport to it now um, the sportsmen themselves can't do the aerial gunning so uh, right. uh, you know, but it, it it's it's just a uh, it's just a merciless way to do it. Um, I've been in Yellowstone where they've um, where they were tagging wolves, putting radio collars on them, and I've watched the you know the uh, fish and wildlife people chase the the wolves with helicopters, mm -hmm. and the wolves just go crazy. They run from tree under trees. They run under bushes, terrified. Oh. I mean, this big roaring thing is, Coming is down chasing them uh, and it, it's it's got to be you know I mean they're terrified and they run them until they're exhausted and then they dart them and then in the case of Yellowstone they go out and they do good things they put on a collar they you know take measurements and whatever mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that you know that that's okay. That's I, okay. I, yeah. I guess. I guess. I know. I guess. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I will I say that the I the, the uh, cause, just maybe not the right yeah. approach. <laughs> well, the afternoon that I watched them, I, I admit I sat with a friend of mine who's a biologist out there, and we sat up on a little ridge, 
And every time the wolf would escape, they'd run in under trees and disappear. We'd cheer, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was it was all great until we got we were all staying in the same motels in Gardner, and we came back that night and the the um, fellow named Ed Bangs who heads up the. Uh, Fish and Wildlife thing came over and he said, we heard you guys. <laughs> 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 so, uh, it, it, it's, uh, but it, it's, it's funny, it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to, to watch, to watch an animal that scared, uh, yeah. trying yeah. to, desperately trying right. to get away. No one and should it, do that to it, anything. Yeah. And in this case, they're, they're dealing with a non-lethal yeah. type of, of thing and it's still hard to watch yeah yeah uh, and the the idea of gunning them down from the air is 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 bad and I started it's, to yeah. watch a video by mistake yeah and I saw them shooting and I oh my god and I saw the wolf get I, oh, oh yeah. and I turned it off so I can't watch this, that I can't was watch this it. a defenders of wildlife yeah one of those video. there's yeah. so many now they're yeah. trying to help and I hear they're trying to close that loophole they're they working are. on they it they are the, very um, hard uh, a couple of legislators have uh, put forth a an, an amendment called the PAW Act, right? And it's Protect America's Wildlife, and that's specifically designed to close the loophole that allows aerial mm -hmm. gunning. So, if you get a chance, sign that petition. Yes, uh, I'll tell you. In, 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 <coughs> in fact, sorry to interrupt. No, but sorry. In, in fact, uh, ATCA, our, our uh, traveling ambassador, <coughs> went down to Washington to help support that. Your wolf. Our wolf. Yeah, tell people they don't know who and, you're traveling. Oh, I'm sorry. Ambassador I'm sorry. Yeah, is sorry. your wolf. We, yeah. have, we have a wolf at the at the Wolf Conservation Center named Atka. He is our uh, most certainly our most enthusiastic ambassador. Uh, he's a young uh, young wolf. He's seven years old, uh, but uh, young by uh, ambassador standards. And he went down to Washington to help support the Wolf Conservation uh, the Paw Act. Um, while he was down there, they thought it, it would be a fine opportunity to have a little photo shoot. Uh -huh. um, so they had the two legislators, and they had Atka, and they had uh, Roger Schickeisen from Defenders of Wildlife. Mm. Uh, now, Atka, even though he's been hand-raised since he was eight days old, still doesn't like to be touched. And Roger made the mistake of touching him. Uh -huh. And he Arr. gave he gave Roger a little growl, <laughs> and Roger removed his hand. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting picture to see Roger saluting the flag while everyone else is facing forward. Um, but um, uh, but but Atka is uh, is our traveling ambassador. Uh, he goes to schools and organizations, uh, uh, communities uh, to promote wolves and uh, right. Educate the people. Uh, and educate it's the people. only way to stop yeah. this because Edu killing. Educate, educate people about what wolves are really all about. Right. Uh, and he he walks on a leash uh, without any muzzle. Uh, he walks right up and down past people, and he's in, incredibly well behaved. Oh, and, that's uh, so sweet. Uh, an interesting an interesting concept for a wild wolf we often say he's a wonderful ambassador but kind of a, a lousy representative of what wolves are yeah he's not as shy and elusive in fact he walks from his enclosure on the leash down to the to the van gets into the uh, into his traveling crate and then he goes down the sawmill parkway and leans into the curbs you know, uh, just like any wolf in the wild would do Aww, <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's that's adorable. So, and I had a question about, you know, outside of, you know, the killing of the wolves, how about the fact that we're, you know, destroying the habitats through deforestation and Yeah, yeah that's, that's having another that factor. That, that certainly is is one of the largest problems that we have in in reintroducing wolves is to find space wow. for them. Um, and when you do find there is there certainly is plenty of area uh, since uh, since 1973, when the Endangered Species Act was passed, uh, wolves were put on that that list uh, in 1974, and since that time, uh, populations uh, have grown significantly where there are wolves. Um, out in in uh, th at the time, there had been only 500 to 1,000 wolves in the lower 48 states. Um, since then, the popu that, they were all in, in, uh, in Minnesota, up near the uh, Canadian border, more trees than people. Mm -hmm. um, and since that time, that population of 500 to 1,000 has grown to about 3,000. 
the wolves have expanded out into Wisconsin and into the upper peninsula of Michigan, and they're doing very, very well. Uh, in Yellowstone, the Yellowstone area, where in 1995 and 96, uh, we brought 66 wolves down, uh, released about half of them in Yellowstone National Park, and the other half in central Idaho. Now that, that those 66 wolves today are 1,645 wolves. Wow. And that's in just a very, very short period oh, of time. That's good. They have wonderful habitat. Uh, they're not being bothered excessively up until this year. There was no hunting of them. So they did extremely well. And, uh, and they will. Left to their own devices, uh, they're going to do fine. Now, of course, you'll get ranchers or farmers uh, that are afraid that they're going to grow into these these huge roaming herds right. of, of wolves. But they it's it, they're they're dependent on prey. They're dependent on eating uh, the wild animals, the stuff right? that they eat, which is mostly elk. Um, so, in in Yellowstone, for instance, the last two years has seen a dramatic downturn in the population of wolves. And uh, it's to be expected. Uh, it's not. It's not something I like, but it's something that certainly, you know, the people, the biologists that that rule cycles, out there yeah. knew would happen. Wolves had grew to a population that that wasn't Natural sustainable. Natural control of right. the population, and, and now, as opposed you know, to yeah, yeah, they thin themselves down. What happens is the the uh, the packs of wolves in Yellowstone, their territory started to overlap. And that brings them into conflict, not with us, but with each other. Mm. And they do their own eliminating. See, if man would leave nature alone, nature can take yeah. care of itself. It would be a wonderful right. thing. But man yeah. is the worst predator, <laughs> the worst busybody, the worst unenlightened person on this planet, the worst thing on this planet. You, you, you said the key word. It's unenlightened. We, we tend to do things by gut reaction. Fear. Yeah. yeah. And ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. Fear and ignorance. Yeah. And, and sometimes, even though it's a well-intended thing, it's bad. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, if you just... if you if eliminate you just, one part of the food chain, you're going to eliminate... Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you just look at the way it was, it was all working. All right. That's right. And we, we were the ones, and it, it had us in it. The, all the, the indigenous tribes right. were out there, and they were getting along fine with the wolves. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, you know, we... We started to build our concrete cities and pave over things and, uh, you know, build areas out, bigger and bigger areas for ourselves and mm -hmm. crowded the other wolf species into smaller and smaller pockets. Uh, and we do the same thing with bears. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they certainly uh, certainly have their, a tough time, too. I mean, the polar bears these days are oh, oh, the global warming is certainly so having, a, having yeah, a tough That's tough really road. sad. Uh, but uh, not to mention, we did the same thing to the Indians, the yes, American Indians. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and that's why that's I love true. the Indians because they were so into the animals and mm -hmm. such spiritual beings. And when they killed a, a, a deer, they used every bit of it. They mm -hmm. prayed over its soul. They didn't waste anything. And they didn't kill just to kill, like hunters do a lot. Right. Of time. I want a trophy on my my wall, you know. They didn't. They don't do that, you know. They just whatever they need, and they only yeah, did it in the winter necessity. time when they couldn't yeah. grow. Right? You yeah. know all this. Yeah. I'm just telling the audiences. Yeah. No. No, it's, you know? it's, it's very true. The Indians coexisted with animals yes. extremely well. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody, everybody, you know, there's that old, th that old saying, can't we just all get along? Right. <laughs> yeah. it's but, exactly. Uh, but it, 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 there's certainly, we've carved out an area for ourselves probably more than we, we needed. We always do, uh, more yeah, than we need. Yeah. And uh, 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 you, you certainly... The problem is always finding middle ground. Uh, one of the reasons I like mm -hmm. Defenders of Wildlife, uh, they were the first that I know of that, that went out and, and said, okay, wait a minute, let's hold on here. Let's get all the groups together, the ranchers, uh, the townspeople, right. get everybody and the environmentalists and activists. And right. We'll all sit board. down and we'll determine what works. And if the ranchers are going to lose some sheep or cattle, we'll pay for that deprivation. And, Makes uh, more sense. They're, yeah, they're probably. Then, you know, imagine the cost of going out and doing these aerial killings. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, that's got to cost a whole lot more than it, introducing it, more of what they want, you know? So, 
it, 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 it worked out very, very well. Now, you know, ranchers will always say, yeah, but that doesn't include, you know, the, the cost of the cow doesn't include my time and effort. And he has a point. There is, you know, there is that. And plus they have to prove that it was actually a, a wolf kill, which is pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that doesn't please everybody. Some people have to have more. Uh, out where, uh, where, where we're reintroducing the Mexican wolf. Um, there had been a long-standing, well, let me back up just a little bit. Um, for years, ranchers have been allowed to free graze their animals, okay. their ca cows, on public lands. And they certainly they didn't want to give that up. And we didn't ask that they give that up. Uh, all we're saying is, that the wolf has a right to be there as well. Mm -hmm. They were there before the cows. Um, the ranchers don't see it that way. They, they think that the wolf is just going to eat my cows. And to the point where they were, they were letting sick and injured cows die in areas where the wolf had been reintroduced. Well, the wolf goes in and he gets a taste of this and says, mm, Oh, ooh, I like cow. Yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> plus, plus, it's a little stupid. It doesn't run away real quickly. <laughs> you know, it's kind of easy to get. You know, why am I knocking myself out killing elk? And um, uh, now, uh, part of, uh, as of the past year or so, uh, they've amended that regulation. And they said now if, uh, if a cow dies, they have to do something to remove it from temptation. Right. Uh, either, you know, lime it, put lime on so it, it's not very tasty, uh, uh, or remove it from the area. Mm. And that, uh, uh, that'll go a long way. The, yeah. it, it, as long as the, the wolves don't get a taste for it, they're, they're not gonna bother it. They're not gonna wanna get involved in areas where people are anyway. So their natural inclination is to go off to the lesser travel areas and hunt the elk and uh, the other wild animals, deer, mm -hmm. sometimes smaller animals, rabbits, that sort of thing. You know, I, a question just came to me because I never, never thought about this before and stopped to think about it. There's the cat, the cat, people have the cattle. Those are the cattle they sell that people eat. They call it meat and, and they eat steak, right? Mm -hmm. And yet then there's the ones they raise in factory farms, mm -hmm. which live their life totally inside in, constantly. In, in, in boxes. Yeah, yeah, in boxes and a horrible life. Mm -hmm. What is the, the difference between the two, between the factory raised and the one out on the the, cat, the ranches? I mean, is there that many out there? What? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think there probably are. I, I Honestly, I don't know the answer. Yeah, I've got to uh, find out but, that answer. Uh, uh, you know what? What's the difference? Yeah, in terms between of? the what, the cattlemen that are worried about the wolves, and then there's there's other meat that people or you know cows that people eat that are raised on factory farms, right? In the horrible conditions, but and that's still a steak. Has the other one they mm. call it a steak, so that people will eat it, and not think of it as I'm going to go eat a cow tonight. You know, have it medium rare. Right. Yeah. So, what's the difference in that one and the other one? There's not that many free running animals on farms anymore like they used to be, I right? I, 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 I Grass-fed is I, healthier yeah, lifestyle for I, them. Is I, that what you mean? Or? Yeah, I don't know yeah, why. I, yeah. think, I think that most beef cows are raised free-range, uh, I guess to use the chicken term. Uh, I think that, uh, I don't know that there are cows that are raised in really confined Things know. for, for no, beef, more, more for more more for milk. Does true? No, yeah, no, like no. For, you know. yeah. no. They, I've seen. Yeah, you know, well, they well, slaughter I, them sure, for meat. But yeah, but but certainly, certainly most ranches, or, or certainly out west, most of the ranchers free free graze, free roam their cows. So yeah, my point in bringing this up is yeah. that are there that many, and is there some wolf such a problem? Yeah, no. Well, see, there's the problem. The wolf is not a big problem. Yeah. Uh, but the wolf is a very marquee animal. Uh, it's something a rancher can point to. He can't say, I lost 60% of my cows to this terrible winter we had. Hmm. And people are going to say, too oh, bad. Well, Mother Nature. Yeah, yeah, tough. That's too bad, you know. Uh, say, I lost a cow or two cows to a wolf. And they say, oh, well, that's terrible. You know, we ought to do something about the wolf. 
Um, just because it, they can. Yeah, because they can, and because it is a, a big, this big marquee animal that they they can they can pin down and, and get their masculinity and, going. And, and, and yap, <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> that's right. They can pin it down and yap about it. You don't hear. You, you never hear the ranch hand that comes back and says, "I shot me a coyote last night." So. <laughs> You know that's uh, coyotes. Yeah, he coyotes. Wants the wolf badge. Yeah, coyotes are smart, and they've, you know, they've they've worked out the when deal. And how, you know, yeah, yeah <laughs> and they worked out the deal, and they, you know, they like I said, they they do a lot more cattle predation than the wolf does, and yet they don't get the big uh, the big X on them. Uh, they uh-huh. do shoot a lot of coyotes, certainly, but uh, but not nearly as many uh, mm. as, as there is predation. Um, and same thing with sheep. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about cows, but sheep is, is pretty much the same same issue. Um, one of the things with, in order to, for wolves to sustain themselves uh, genetically, they have to be able to go from from their pack to another pack. And mm-hmm. in order to uh, keep from fighting with each other, they have to, as they become more numerous, they have to expand to bigger and bigger territories. Um, in order to expand um, uh, from one state to another, there was a corridor out west between, uh, uh, between Montana and Idaho, and there was a sheep, big sheep, experimental sheep raising. <laughs> you call it a in, carter? In, in the center of this thing. Carver. Carver? What is that? You say a carver? An, no, uh, an experimental sheep. No, before that, you said between the states. Oh, corridor. corridor. Oh, corridor. Oh, corridor. oh, I'm sorry. Cor- I thought corridor. you said carver. Yeah. Corridor, okay. And uh, uh, so all the sheep wanted, to, oh, all the sheep, all the wolves wanted to go from state A to state B through this corridor. And here in the middle of it is, a, is this government-owned and operated experimental sheep station that was doing no research. They just had the sheep there. Well... I'm a hungry wolf. Was it wolf. an experiment f- to see what the no, wolves would no, do, no. or it was just been some there other for years? They, an experiment they, been, on sheep? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they were, you know, conditions and race. I, I really don't know what they were experimenting mm. with, but um, uh, but uh, uh, fortunately, <laughs> a couple of environmental <laughs> organizations got hold of this thing, and they managed have managed to shut it down. Said, so, okay, let's. Why don't we just take Divert the sheep the out, of that, uh, out of harm's way for <laughs> now, you know? And then, since you're not doing anything with them anyway, you know, why, why you know, why put this and say, so, oh, they just killed another 16 sheep, you know? And, uh, <laughs> you know sure, you know? Well, that's yeah. what they're going to do. It's yeah. their natural instinct. It, it is. It is. Yeah, you yeah. just, uh, well... Susie, I'll meet you later by the barn. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Experiment's over. Yeah, yeah. So how how has working with the wolves like personally touched your life? Well, it's it's interesting. I I didn't start out to work with wolves. I my daughter is a wildlife photographer, oh. and she got me started on taking critter pictures, and then I actually got hooked on taking photos of bears. Mm. Wow. And so I spent a lot of time photographing grizzly bears and, and black bears and polar bears. Um, and that's what brought me to Yellowstone. And I had friends out there and got interested in some of their um, uh, projects, this small carnivore study, and started to go out there to help them. And that's when I met the wolves. The, you know, in the middle of my traveling around looking for Martins and Lynx, all of a sudden there was this little project going on where they were bringing wolves back. I said, well, that's pretty interesting. So uh, I've always liked dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I, you know, got mildly interested. Uh, then to be real honest, what happened, um, I retired from CBS. Um, was having a wonderful time. I was sailing my boat. I was playing with my dog, having great time taking my dog sailing and my wife said okay time to get off your butt and go and do something and I said well I don't want to go back to work and she said well then volunteer somewhere and I said what part of work do you not understand <laughs> and I said I said I, I really what I'd really like to, uh, to do is just sail my boat and she said no no you've got to do something more meaningful a friend of ours does publicity up at the Wolf Center and she said I have something you might be interested in and I meandered up and met with uh, the folks that run it and uh, 
got involved in talking. I love to talk. You may not have noticed that. <laughs> no. It's a subtle, subtle thing. Yeah, it is. Uh, got over my inherent shyness, basically, yeah. of uh, doing it. And, uh, and I love it. I love it. So that's what, that's what brought me to the Wolf Center. I feel that it's really a good chance to give back something. Mm. to the animals right. which have brought so much joy to me I mean I've been all over the world photographing animals one of the things I really like to do is is kind of hook into an animal and then say okay where can I go and take some photos of this and then I'll go off and my wife and I'll go off and we'll uh, we'll photograph it we're gonna head in uh, in August we're heading down to the Pantanels again to photograph Jaguars Wow. Um, Isn't so, that nice? Your, your wife, your, your mate yeah, there yeah. does it with you. That's so she nice. Does. Yeah. She, uh, uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. When I met her, I, I had spent all my formative years racing sailboats, and I loved it. And I met her, and she was a traveler. She went around. She did a little bit of sailing, but mostly she traveled around. Well, it was like opening Pandora's box. She got yeah. me started, and now she can't get the lid shut again. You know, <laughs> like, okay, say, it's time to you know, you know I think you know this would be a good year to stay home. And I'd say, oh no, no, look, we've got you know, I've got all these places to go and things to see. That's so wonderful. So, yeah, to be able, to, yeah, to, be to, able to do what you love, your your heart's work. It, that's yeah, so wonderful. It is, and and it's a question of doing it. That's the thing. How about people out there who would love to do more things with the animals, but a lot of it's volunteer. Yeah. They can't make any living on it, no. and 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 that's you know that's yeah. sad, you know. You, but even the people being paid to do it aren't making not living, making it much. Not making a living doing it. It's a very hard thing. My daughter, like I said, is a wildlife photographer. She's got some some niche <laughs> photography, and she's doing okay. But is she going to get rich doing it? No. People who raise dogs. I mean. You know, they love dogs. They raise dogs, but they don't make any money with that. Very hard, very hard so to make. So it's just a labor of love. It is a labor of love. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I look at my friends who are biologists out in, um, in Montana, and they've been working with animals for their whole lives. And uh, when I first met them, they were making no money at all. And it was, it was clearly just a labor of love. Now... They've gotten enough grants and underwriting to at least have a life out there. Mm -hmm. They were able to get a house and a, mm -hmm. and a car. Yeah. A, lot, a lot comes from donations. Uh, but people, people that want to work with animals uh, really... The donations are yeah. so important. We can't stress that enough. Yeah. I mean, if you know, it's... It's, uh, it, it's, it's <sighs> important. Uh, there is always something you can do. You can... You can you know, I mean, we at the Wolf Center, we couldn't run the Wolf Center without, without volunteers. volunteers. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's that important, and the people that come are great. You know, they put in endless hours doing stuff. Uh, I, you know, I went up as an educator, uh, not realizing that one of my jobs as an educator is when some of the roadkill deer comes in and somebody, our curator, will come and crank it up on a chain and you're trying to hold it and well, kibbles yeah. and bits are falling out. Yeah. You know, and you're, you're saying, oh, this is what Jack an educator does. many trades. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wearing all the hats. Yeah, yeah. Well, you well, have, to, yeah. have to learn from the ground up. You yeah. know? I say to that, God bless all the people out there who help animals in any way that they do mm -hmm. it. People who can go out and activists and see the things going on and film it Absolutely. so that we know. People who can do what you do. People who educate. Even the people who get on their computers and sign petitions and everything. God bless you all. There's always something you can do. Taking in the animals, yeah. strays, pets, anything. Help the animals. The animals are put here in our care to help them. Okay, off my box. Now, <laughs> tell us a little bit about how wolves do live in the wild. Okay, well, how do wolves live? We, we live in families. Right. right? Mm -hmm. and now, I'm not going to get into the politics of who's the boss of our family. Alpha. You know? <laughs> the alpha. But, no. but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just say the parents are the boss of the, uh, of the family. Um, with wolves, it's the alpha pair. They're the mom and dad. They're the, uh, they're the uh, boss, the unmitigated boss. They, they make all the big decisions, where we're going to hunt, if we're going to hunt, what we're going to hunt, where we're going to live, when we're going to move, what puppy gets bitten in the butt for being bad. Uh, all the decisions come from the alpha pair. Uh, then once a year, uh, unlike us, once a year only, uh, wolves have puppies. Uh, anywhere uh, from four to six puppies generally. 
Um, and those pups are going to stay with mom and dad anywhere from two to three years. Hmm. Uh, then like some older teenagers, some of the wolves get a, get an itch to see a little more of the world maybe, uh, start their own family, and they disperse, so they leave the pack, uh, and they go off on their own. But, you know, like some kids, some stay with their family forever. Uh, and in the end, a wolf pack uh, can be, um, is, well, it's comprised of the alpha pair, uh, the puppies from that year, and the aunts and uncles or pups from the, the previous years. Hmm. And uh, the pack can be small, it can be just the alpha pair. Or we had a pack in Yellowstone that was 37 wolves. Wow. Holy cow. So huge, that must have been yeah, amazing. Yeah, huge, Big huge family. pack. Was, yeah, called the Druids. Uh, and uh, they were uh, they were the the ruling class of Yellowstone for many many years, and uh, kind of a sad subscript. They're down to their last wolf, and she's not doing well. What, what uh, happened? Well, uh, a number of things. They lost uh, one year. They lost their their puppies from mange. Uh, uh, they lost some from wolf wolf on wolf conflicts. Um, in, in short, they had a, a, a couple of bad years, but just in this, this past uh, year or so, it's been, it's been loss of puppies and this mange that has, has decimated the pack. Mange, how does, how does up, that contract in? Yeah, out there uh, in the wild. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure of all the ways. I know yeah. it's, it's, it's a, uh, uh, like a mite gets oh, in okay. on, on the thing and it's passed. It's easy to contract. And what it does, it's not in and of itself it isn't fatal, but you lose hair and uh, it makes you susceptible yeah, you know, to infection. Susceptible to infection mm -hmm. and to uh, cold and uh, lots of bad things can happen. Mm -hmm. and I saw one a uh, dog that had that in the yeah. Newton Haven Animal Shelter, yeah, the poor thing. Yeah, they had to finally put him down. Yeah. You can't do much yeah. with it. It's very hard to very hard to cure. Uh, but the druids were quite a big deal for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, you know, they, but things do change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cycles. Yeah. So their food sources now out in the wild are, or if they're, if they're not in the, there's no, is there elk all over the place or? I, there, <laughs> there is elk where, where wolves live. Oh, there really? is. Oh, okay. And, so and, they, that's uh, where they uh, settle. Yeah. The, uh, uh, that is their primary. <laughs> wolves, wolves like ungulates. Now an ungulate is just an animal with a hoof. Oh. So we learned a new word. Yeah, yeah. here here in the east Bears. it would be deer or moose. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 out west it's it's elk, uh, moose, bison. Mm -hmm. uh, up in the north country it would be uh, caribou, muskox, moose, uh, and those are the things so that are wolves. Some big animals yeah, they go for. Yeah, big yeah. big animals, big big animals, and the only way this little wolf can bring down these big animals, and, and they're what we call a coursing predator. Um, the wolf is tr gonna try and make the herd of elk or caribou or bison run. And he's doing it for two reasons. He's doing it, uh, primarily he's looking for the easiest the meal. The link, yeah. Yep. Whatever is easy to take down, whether it's the oldest animal or the youngest animal or a sick or injured animal, anything that's easy is gonna be his first choice. Uh, the second reason he does it, uh, here in the east, a healthy deer can run about 45 miles an hour. A healthy wolf runs about 30 to 35 miles an hour. So you can't really catch them unless they use a little pack cooperation mm -hmm. or unless they uh, uh, use some other method of, uh, of tiring them out. And uh, uh, so they, they, they course and then they they'll bring this prey down. And, and there again, they just kill what they need to eat at they, that time. They're they, not like, go out and kill they, other animals just for they, the fun. No, they don't They don't ever do it for the fun. No. No, they don't. Not like uh, people. Some, yeah. some animals do. Some animals will, you know. Play with their prey. With cats. Their, yeah. yeah <laughs> cats. If you let them out. Yeah. Cats, cats will whack the prey yeah. around a little bit. But wolves, uh, wolves in Yellowstone, um, in the early going, when wolves first came back, they came back to, uh, uh, they, well, let me back up just a second. The last wolf was taken out of Yellowstone in 1927. And um, uh, they were brought back in 1995 and 96. 
well, that's seven, 70, 70 years, yeah. they had what we call wolf stupid elk out there. And, these, and uh, a big population yeah, of it, probably, yeah, at that point. it's been a long time since a wolf had eaten them. <laughs> so they didn't, they weren't, they, they weren't ready to run. <laughs> they weren't paying much attention. Part of the big problem, they would just stand around and eat. So the wolves came back and said, well, this is Beast. great. It's like a buffet, you know. And they, uh, uh, so in, the, in those days, um, the wolves had, had their, uh, you know, so many elk around because elk had overpopulated the park, yeah. uh, that they could be very selective about what they ate. So they would only eat the good parts, you know. Oh, you know, I don't like that part, you know. Uh, and they would That's go funny. off. funny, you know, it's funny, because, yeah. like, it's the same thing with humans. I mean, if you have so much of something, you, yeah. take, you take it for granted. Yeah, you like, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And, I'll and throw that away, yeah. you know. And consequently, the second big job that the wolf does is provide food for lots and lots of other animals. Oh. A wolf, when a wolf brings down one of these, a bison, a, you know, a 2,000 pound bison, uh, now he has a pretty big appetite. He's gonna e eat anywhere between 18 and 22 pounds of food in a single sitting. Wow. Now that's Ooh. pretty, that's yeah. pretty good. But then, you know, kind of like Thanksgiving. Stays you know, there you, for yeah, a while. Yeah, you see, you're saying, oh, I'm a little full. So they, they go off to look for a couch to lie down and nap <laughs> on. And all these, uh, all these other animals will come in, bears and fox and uh, coyotes. Uh, they'll, they'll feed on that. Big predator birds like eagles will come down and, and eat some. Uh, even little songbirds like jays and uh, stuff will come in and just get kibbles and bits and take some of the hair for the nests. Uh, and uh, once all of those guys have eaten their fill and the wolf has gone back for two or three things, you know, there's nothing at all left. Yeah, so every, yeah, every little so bit. Every, everything yeah, gets no used, waste everything in the gets animal used world. Up. Right, right, no which, waste. Is the, which is the way it should be. Um, in the beginning, when the elk were totally oblivious, the wolf <laughs> could afford to be you know, very choosy Look about what the, he ate. You know, I'm just eating the best cuts. Yeah, I'm just eating the veal. I'm just eating this. You know, the prime here. Uh, now uh, it's a little harder. Yeah. Uh, the wolf population isn't as strong. The elk population has gone down, and so the wolves are eating more of the elk. So it's, uh, uh, you know, as you said, it's like like people. Balance, yeah. uh, it, it, and it balances itself out. So how long do they live? What's the long longevity of uh, the wolves out in, there in, in the, the wild? wild yeah. In the wild, a wolf's going to live six to eight years. That's all? That's Yeah, that's it. Wow. Oh, my and, God. I thought and, it was much longer. And that's only if he gets to his first birthday. Only about 50% of, of pups are going to make it to their Why? first birthday. Uh, lots of bad things happen in the wild. Uh, there's other predators. Um, What's their biggest predator? Well, uh, sad, other than us. It would yes. be other wolves. Other wolves. Yeah, okay, wolf, wolf on wolf predation is really tough. Mm -hmm. uh, other things that feed on pups, uh, eagles might grab one. Okay. Um, uh, what about a, bear? A, a mountain okay. lion, a bear would try and grab a, a wolf pup. Doesn't happen real often. Mm -hmm. Most mostly, it's other wolves that will kill wow. the puppies, uh, or or things like uh, the cold, or or flash flood, or you know, lots of. Uh, any kind of disease or stuff, sickness yeah. or environmental problem, and that's what thins down the puppy population. So it's it's really rough on pups. They have a they have a tough time. Uh, if they do make that first birthday, six to eight years, in captivity, uh, 12, 14, maybe even eighteen years. Wow. So there yeah, they've got veterinary care. Or they've got right. You know, how do you prepare them for re-release? Like how do you? I mean that must be interesting because they are hunters. Yeah, and it's a very, here you're like okay, yeah. have a little. And no, they're used to you. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's how do they very, get out there and It's survive. a very, very, very good question. We actually have two different ways of releasing our endangered species. The red wolf um, is going to an area that's sort of well monitored and, and down in, larger, in, in, in yeah. yeah in the outer banks of North Carolina. We we kind of know where they, they are. Graduate in stages. Yeah, so, so, so what we do yeah. with them, we take when our red wolves have puppies. Keep your fingers crossed in the next week or so. Uh, mm. We'll take some of those pups, not all. We'll take them down to uh, the, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and we'll leave them on the doorstep of a wolf that has puppies the same age. 
Huh. Now she's going to turn around and say, "Oh, six! I thought I had four. Oh well," <laughs> and she raises them. And she, Good. she, they wolves love their puppies, and they'll raise them, and that's been very, very effective. Oh, uh, so mom and dad never are going to get re-released, but the puppies will. Yeah. Okay, oh. that makes okay. sense because they're that, they got that blank slate. They can be that's, molded. That's right. <laughs> now they grow up thinking they were always wild wolves. Yeah. And they don't. They they're trained to hunt from by their you know stepmom and stepdad. They just think that it's as natural as can be. Now the the Mexican wolves. It's a little different story. Um, we keep them totally separate from the the uh, population. So they get very very little exposure to any human contact at all. Okay. So they really are afraid. They they stay even with us. They don't want anything to do with us. They stay as far away as as they can. We will take them as a pack. We'll take mom and dad and the puppies and we'll take them as, as, an, as a whole entity, take them down to um, the Arizona, New Mexico area, pick out a part of that area that, that doesn't have wolves and we'll re-release the whole pack okay, to run. so they don't have now, yeah, the now, competition of the other that, wolves. That's right. And, how do they know how to hunt? They just know. They just know. When we, the very first release of red wolves, it took them 10 days to make their first kill of wow. a deer. And that's pretty much what they do normally. Amazing. So they just, it's just inbred. They, they learn very quickly. Um, well, we gotta, we're gonna, we're sort of getting to the end of our yeah, time. Yeah, we got about so. another minute. Is there anything you want to say to the our audience before we? Uh, we got about a minute. Okay. Went fast. Well, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to urge everybody to come up to the uh, Wolf Conservation oh, yeah. Center yes. in Salem, South New York. in South Salem, New York. South Salem. And uh, there are people that can talk a lot better than I can. Oh and, no, uh, oh, he's no, wonderful. No, no. Yeah. I've and, uh, and I've and, heard him. You know, he's wonderful. And, and see our wolves. And short of that, I, I would certainly urge people to sign petitions to help animals. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's uh, a website yeah. they can go to, right? So yes, let me give you the website, okay? You all got a pencil? You ready? Got a pencil? Here we go. It's www.nywolf, okay? And that's New York Wolf, so it's nywolf, W-O-L-F, dot org. Dot org. And so. you can bring up the Wolf's uh, Conservation Center and uh, make your plans to go and everything. Yes. Well, yes. it was so wonderful oh, to have you here. Thank you it was for so interesting. Me. It was so, so interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. It's wonderful. Okay. All right. Well, so, we're gonna um, put up our yeah, information. Yeah. If, if you would like to uh, to reach us and ask any questions about tonight's show or any other show, or if you would like to ask some questions about Mr. Darling, just please uh, email us at heal outside the box at yahoo.com. You may also go to your town's websites and look up program schedules for these shows or ask them any questions you would like. Okay, okay cool and tonight. the tonight's quote is this. Until we have the courage to recognize cruelty for what it is, whether its victim is human or animal, we cannot expect things to be much better in this world. We cannot have peace among men whose hearts delight in killing any living creature. By every act that glorifies or even tolerates such moronic delight in killing, we set back the progress of humanity. And that is by Rachel Carson, an author. Thank well, you for thank joining, you for joining us, us again. And we'll see you next time. Tune in. Good night. Good night. As you look out through the window To the world you have made Always know you are the vision See the truth, darkness fades Fear's not alive We're dreaming